In today's video, I want to give you guys an update on us seeing a massive PlayStation 5 gameplay demo soon. That'll be for Ratchet & Clank, A Rift Apart. Very excited for that. We'll talk about that. Speaking of the PlayStation 5, Metro Developers sees loads of possibilities for any game with the PlayStation 5's unique DualSense controller. And lastly, do want to talk a little bit about Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory as we got a release date for that game and a few updates. We'll talk that at the end of this video. But first of all, publisher Sony Interactive Entertainment and developer Insomniac will premiere a a gameplay demo of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart for PlayStation 5 during the Gamescom 2020 opening night livestream on August 27th at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern. Host Jeff Keighley has officially announced you'll be able to watch it on YouTube and Twitch. According to Keighley, this is a full, longer, uncut demo than the demonstration showed in June. Insomniac community manager James Stevenson added, yup, full gameplay demo playthrough versus a cutdown. Following the demonstration, Keighley will be joined by Insomniac Games to discuss the title. Maybe we'll get a release window? No, I don't know. At this point, I'm led to believe that this will be a 2021 game. But based on what I've been looking into, this seems to be the general consensus from a developer standpoint and a consumer standpoint as well that Ratchet & Clank A Rift Apart is really going to be one of those games that showcase what next generation is all about. And I feel like a big reason for that is the whole talk about the SSD and how in Ratchet & Clank you can seamlessly transition from these various worlds with no load times. And that is something that absolutely would not have been possible on the PlayStation 4. I'm just happy to see Ratchet and Clank back in some form. I know that, you know, we can talk about the technical specifications and things like that, and that's fantastic. Ratchet is going to be a standard bearer from a technical standpoint. However, I'm more so excited about just seeing the Lombax man back, man. Um, I've been a big Ratchet and Clank fan going back to the 2004 days, you know, on the PlayStation 2, whether it be Ratchet and Clank 1, Going Commando, Up Your Arsenal. There was uh, Deadlocked, which Deadlocked is kind of forgotten about. I played Size Matters. I played Secret Agent Clank. I played all the future games. I played literally every single Ratchet and Clank game, at least every single one that I know about. And it was kind of upsetting to see Ratchet gone for so long. Yes, in 2016, we got that Ratchet and Clank uh, 1 re make and that was fantastic but I want a new story I want a new layer to Ratchet and Clank being added because I think at the end of a uh, crack in time and the end of the future series you did have a lot of opportunity to explore Ratchet a bit more but Insomniac has kept that in the vault but now Ratchet and Clank will finally be back with Rift Apart we get a gameplay demo tomorrow, and then hopefully the release of the game will be sooner rather than later. Why I say I don't think it's going to be a launch title is because Insomniac is putting out uh, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales on the launch of the PlayStation 5. Generally speaking, it's very rare for a studio to put out two of their own games on the same day. I mean, is it possible? Maybe? Um... And I do know Insomniac is now split up into two different teams working on various projects. However, I just don't think that makes a lot of sense for a studio, uh, even if they are split up in two, to be putting out two of their own games. Again, they could do it. I just don't see that being all that likely. Otherwise, like the PlayStation 5 launch would literally be all about Insomniac. And I think they still want to keep some things close to the vest. You put out Miles Morales right now, maybe some other uh, Sony Worldwide Studios put out some other games, and then Ratchet & Clank can be a spring 2021 title, or even a, you know, mid-2021 title, whatever you want to do. Alright, moving on from that, staying on topic with the PlayStation 5, Metro Developer seeds loads of possibilities with PlayStation 5's DualSense controller. For a games executive producer John Block had a brief interview with the PlayStation official magazine UK, that's the October 2020 issue 179, with the PlayStation 5 hardware as the main focus, Block stated that Praise for the DualSense controller, trying to imagine how it could be used in a Metro game. Noting, we can see loads of possibilities there for any game. Probably the first thing that comes to mind for Metro would be getting the tactile feedback of pressure as you pump up a rifle. Forced to pick up between the ray tracing support and the brand new SSD, though, the producer of Metro Exodus said the former is a sign of a true generational leap. It is perhaps unsurprising since Metro Exodus was one of the first true ray tracing showcases on PC. And if you play that game on PC, yeah, it looks absolutely phenomenal. He noted we are fully committed to ray tracing moving forward, and to see that available on the PlayStation 5 is probably the biggest feature that we're excited about. The faster SSD will help a lot with player experience, but adding support for ray tracing is the sort of thing that, to us, shows a true generational leap in the hardware. That is not to say the SSD won't be useful, as he noted, as environments get larger and more densely packed with assets, loading times go up, and streaming tech becomes more and more critical. Faster hardware means we can push those limits faster. Developers need to deliver on the promises of all the cool things. At this point, we still don't know if Metro Exodus is going to see a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X upgrade. Makes all of the sense in the world since Metro is one of those games that 
Exodus looks good on the PlayStation 4, don't get me wrong, but Metro is clearly handicapped by the restrictions that consoles offer. That's why Metro 2033 and Last Light, it was so good to see those on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Because Metro 2033 was on the 360, and then Last Light was on both the 360 and PS3. And yeah, those games suffered quite a bit. Like, if you play Last Light on PC, and then you play it on PlayStation 3, yeah, it's a night and day in terms of the difference. But if we can get an Exodus upgrade on PlayStation 5, I think that would be really cool to see. As far as what the Metro developer in 4A Games is doing next, that still remains to be seen. Recently, they've been acquired by Embracer Group under the Saber Interactive label, so it'll be interesting to see where they go moving forward, but it's a studio that I'm definitely gonna keep tabs on. Lastly, Kingdom Hearts is a franchise that's as big as any other. I don't know, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but definitely one of the most popular uh, franchises in all of video games, and we get the latest game in the franchise. While it's not gonna be your traditional Kingdom Hearts games, you guys know that Kingdom Hearts has a plethora of great musical tracks, and that's what's gonna be highlighted in Kingdom Hearts' Melody of Memory as it launches launches in November 11th in Japan and November 13th over here in the West. Melody of Memory will launch for PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch on November 11th in Japan, November 13th in the West, $59.99, so a full premium retail price. Square Enix has officially announced the PlayStation 4 and Switch versions will be available both physically and digitally, so it looks like the Xbox version will only be available digitally. Kind of interesting they go that route. Pre-orders are available now via the Microsoft Store and Nintendo eShop, and soon via the PlayStation Store. Users who purchase the game via the PlayStation Store by December 13th, 31st will receive a Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory PlayStation 4 theme. Pre-orders for the physical edition are now available at select retailers including the place or I should say the Square Enix online store. An overview of the game notes in Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory a whole host of familiar Disney friends, foes, and adventures of wake players will experience the magic of musical exploration by traversing through worlds packed with rhythm action challenges as they collect and master over 140 songs from the Kingdom Hearts series along the way. Whether alone or with a friend and family via local co-op and online multiplayer player, you'll need to defeat tough enemies and bosses to achieve the top ranks through three different playstyles. Gamers of all ages can choose their level of challenge depending on whether they want to enjoy the songs and adventure without complicated controls or showcase their skills with complex combos to put on the ultimate performance. I know this isn't the traditional Kingdom Hearts games, but I'm still uh, pretty excited for this. I've been getting more and more into music rhythm games. I've been mentioning it uh, more often, but uh, DJ, DJ Max really brought back my love for music rhythm titles, you know, after like Rock Band and Guitar Hero went to the wayside, but DJ Max really made me appreciate music rhythm games again, and Kingdom Hearts inherently already has great musical tracks. The only thing is $59.99. You know, I don't know what content is going to be persistent in the game. We do know over 140 songs, but $60 does seem a little bit expensive for a game like this. We'll see how it ultimately turns out. Could be a complete surprise, and at the end of the day, if you're a hardcore Kingdom Hearts fan like what I think this game is really targeting at, it'll probably end up being a pretty big seller. But that's going to conclude this video. Again, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart Gameplay Demonstration set for Gamescom 2020. That is tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Be there or be squared, as they say. Metro developer sees loads of possibilities for any game with PS5. Dual Sense and Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory drops at November 11th in Japan, November 13th in the West. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.